Like, any way that you could touch somebody, you want to touch them. You got to make yourself, like, omnipresent. Cold and warm calls. Too. Yeah, you got to make yourself omnipresent, right? So, if you're on social media and you're like, oh, this only got 10 views, okay, post something else. Hit them another way. Post it on Facebook. Post it on TikTok. You are literally trying, like, you have to give people options. Yeah. Give people things. And even yourself, you got to figure out what you actually want to do. And, of course, you know, some things that get 10 views because you're, you're just now starting. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know anybody that, like, like you said, you left corporate America. I was supposed to make all this money. I don't know anybody that's going to do that immediately. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't know anyone that's going to, at least I don't know anyone personally. They be saying that. They be lying, y'all. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I left my job and I made, no, Yeah, you didn't. no, you didn't. It took you, no, like, you two didn't. years. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because. Two years, you lost two houses and five cars. Shut building up. stuff from scratch costs money. Yeah, it costs money. Please stop. You lose like, and then you gain. We're not going to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like, um. You know, a lot of times, too, with a free game, I feel like people don't even realize that the information that they have is valuable. Yeah. Because they didn't post it. Not even because they didn't post it. You know, I thought that everybody knew how to sell. How? I don't know. I, I didn't know that the things that I knew were things that other people didn't know. So I would never, mm. I didn't see value in me teaching people how to do sales. I'm like, uh, that's just like an innate thing. I didn't know that. I'm not, I don't like sales. And t- oh, wow. I, I didn't I'm know like, that. I, like I didn't like sales either, but I knew like the concept of how to mm. do it, right? But everybody doesn't get the concept. So there's always value in what you have to offer. I even went so far as to say, well, why would a corporation hire me to teach them how to sell? Wouldn't they already know how to do that because they became a corporation? But no. There, I, there was an insurance agency that called me to help them put a strategy in place for their um, for their outreach, like to learn how to mm. nurture and do all those things. I'm like, how were y'all doing it before? They were manually doing all this stuff, manually. And because it sustained them to this point, it worked. But, it works. but now they realized it's not going to work forever. But if you discount yourself saying like, oh, why would that person need me? They've been doing it. Yeah, they've been doing it this long, doing it this way. But you know a better way. Some people are stuck in their ways. Yeah. Like if it if it's not broken, we're not going to fix it. Yes, That's but there will, there will come to a point where they need to fix it and they oh, need absolutely. you to fix it. Absolutely. So don't discount yourself. Absolutely. I mean, I think that um, also is that like, there's a lot of large corporations that are manual. Like working as a business analyst in the past and a project manager, I'm like, y'all use what to do what? And this is how y'all been work. Like, and it's worked this far. And um, it's like mind blowing to me though, because for them, they're like, yeah, it's, it's great. No, it's not. It's not efficient. Girl. So I worked at a logistics company right before I left corporate America. I hated it. Um, it was great because they let me do what I want to do, but I just didn't like logistics. So, in that company, our sales process was so manual, and we had a whole marketing team that we had very close relationships with. And to me, I'm like, the as a marketing team, what y'all should be doing is creating our email sequences for us and mm. allowing us to just go in and change it. What they were doing was focusing on their efforts on like building brand awareness. No, y'all need a separate team to build brand awareness, like out in these streets, ads, radio presence, all that. But we're on the, we're in the field. We're the ones that build the brand awareness. Give us tools and resources to do it more effectively. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We don't have time to come up with email sequences because no. we're trying to close business. That's what y'all should be doing. Mm. But they didn't know that. But I know that from being in the field that that's what uh. we needed. So I can now go to other corporations because this is a large corporation. I can now go to other corporations and teach them how to make their sales and marketing team work in congruency so wow. that they can make more money faster. Like, don't discount the knowledge that you have through the experiences that you've learned. But I know that, see, that's, see, that's even, I'm sure that's a different conversation or whatever. That's probably a whole different process <laughs> telling corporate people uh, what to do with 100%. their own company because the, the, the bells and whistles are all already there according to them mm-hmm. when it's really not, mm-hmm. you know. But that's why I tell people all the time, like, you would be surprised. It doesn't matter how large the company is. It doesn't matter how large this is or yep. how small. A lot of people don't have all the tools. Nope. No, or or they have all the tools, they're just not using them properly. Yep. Uh, so it looks like they can't provide anything for yep. you. Yep. They oh got all the tools, but they are not using them to their advantage. Oh my goodness. That, like, so yet yeah, y'all have all these W2 employees. <laughs> like and ain't using them effectively. And they're not using them. Y'all are wild. Yeah, but you gotta realize that people in positions in corporate America, they are all people. Mm. These are not machines, these are people. 
making decisions. So just like you and I are business owners making these decisions like, oh yeah, that look at this new shiny new tool that's going to do this thing. I'm going to buy it and never use it. Corporations doing the same That's so crazy. Things. And they have a bigger budget. And they have a bigger budget so they don't feel the hit of paying for something constantly and realize that, oh, we're not actually using this right. Oh my gosh. that That is actually very hilarious to me. Like, that's so funny you're saying that because I work for one company. Couldn't stand it. It was an engineering company. And, um, I think I believe it was my first, actually my first corporate business, corporate uh, company that I ever worked for out of college, and um, they were using Microsoft Access. I don't even know what that is. What is Microsoft Access? So pretty much, you're you're building queries in it. Mm. That's that's the most that I knew. I was I remember I was I think I was building like RFQs and mm. RFPs inside of it, and it was just it's literally, and it was me typing them in manually, like. Do you know how many RFQs came in? And you were doing it manually? Girl. And they were like, every morning, they would just put the, set them on my desk. All right, get these done. Like, yeah. And, but that's a lot of people's thought process is like, as long as it gets done, and they're willing to stay um, after hours in mm-hmm, the office. Mm-hmm. When I got some more sense, you know, being fresh out of uh, college, what, 22 years old? Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just do the work. But when you hit 20, when I hit like 26, 27, 28, I'm like, I'm not staying after five o'clock. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't even get overtime here. Oh, that's real crazy. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not doing yeah. that. But like that, the way that corporate America is fixed sometimes, at least certain businesses, I won't say all of the corporations, is like manual work. Mm-hmm. Manual labor is the best way to get something mm-hmm. done. And I'm like, no, because now you have people that stay after work and you wonder why people are looking for other jobs. Yeah. Because when one, you're not paying them overtime. Um, that's not like... It, it's just it just it doesn't even make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Like you're and they're overworked and they're underpaid. Mm-hmm. So like it's just it's just wild to me that you even said that. Like that that happens all the time yep. with larger corporations and they have big budgets. Mm-hmm. They have the money to um, get newer tools, newer softwares, but they just won't do it. But that's the same thing with entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. We we can we can build a team. Yep. We can go get help, but we don't want to because we want to we want to have a hand in every yeah, department. And you can't have a hand in everything. You can't do that. Like even the CEOs, CEOs of these large companies, when do you see them in the office? Exactly. When do, I, I don't think I've ever met a CEO of any large company I've worked for inside of the office. Mm. They literally can't do that. Yeah, they don't have time. They're doing cheap executive things. Making more money. Outside of the corporation. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> 